What's up, YouTube Nation, Machine Family, MachineTutorials.com fam. Everybody watching this video, it's your boy Knock back with you once again. Um, pardon the decor in the background, unfinished basement downstairs. Been moving my studio all over the basement, upstairs, everything. I, I think I found my spot now, so it'll be a lot better looking after a while. I'll straighten it up. Um, first off, I want to say this video is just touching on the basics of machine because I get a lot of questions of people asking, you know, how the pads, how do you make the pads cut each other off? Or how do you make a sample stop and everything? So... We're going to cover those bases because a lot of people are coming into the machine family. We just had 1.8 drop not long ago, uh, a couple of days ago, actually, and the new controller is going to be coming out. So we're going to get a whole new flood of people coming in. So I like to condense a couple of cop topics I've covered over the last uh, two or three years doing YouTube machines uh, videos. So we can put them all in one video, just go boom, 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 make it fast because I can't stand long videos. And if you miss something, you can always rewind. That's the beauty of making the videos. Shout out to Native Instruments, Ashley. Congratulations to them on creating this great product. And also, I want to tell you, when you got the name Killer after your name, everybody knows you're number one because everybody's trying to say this is the machine killer. That's the machine killer. This item's coming out as a machine killer. So we had a new item just came out recently. Everybody knows what it is. And uh, pretty much they're saying that's the machine killer. I don't think so. It's dope, but machine got this lane. So... Salute the machine, and also, let's get to the videos, and let's cover these questions, and let's roll with it. Knock out. One question I'd like to get out of the way off the bat is, uh, can you sample into the hardware? It's probably a question I get from people who haven't gotten machine yet, who are inquiring about it. You actually cannot sample into the hardware unit. All the sounds and everything is in the computer, and you run it from... The USB, which is on the back, you have a USB connector, and also you have MIDI in and MIDI out. But you don't have an audio interface inside the actual hardware unit. Now, although this is not a, um, this is a controller, pretty much, it's so integrated, or it's integrated so well that you can pretty much do your whole beat in here without looking at the, um, looking at the screen. I never usually look at the screen anyway, so it's almost like you're sampling in here anyway. So, pretty much, you run the USB cord out of the hardware into your computer into your computer's usb slot and that's how it controls the sounds that are in your computer so we got that covered you actually cannot sample into the hardware you go into the computer but the controller makes it like you're sampling in here anyway so it's pretty great all right another question i get is about pads and having samples play all the way through or actually stop when you take your finger off the pad in this case it's playing all the way through that's the sample right there. Let's go and hit sound, modules, and we have the sampler lit. You'll see the sound, modules, and sampler tab lit. lit. You actually go and uh, make sure you're not in browse or sampling mode, of course. And you can scroll over to where you see type. And you'll see it's on one shot right now. Turn it to ADSR. It only plays when you touch the pad. When it back to a, uh, one shot. You can actually do it like that. It's that simple to get it to uh, the way you want it. So uh, one thing you'll notice is when it's on one shot and I'm hitting the pad, all of the times I'm hitting, they're overlaying each other. Might not be a situation you want. So let's scroll over. We're in the same mode. Let's scroll over to where it says polyphony. Cut the polyphony down to one. Problem solved. Still playing all the way through, but not overlaying each time you hit it. Now, let's turn this back up to, uh, oh, let's, you know what, what, what we'll do? We'll go ahead and duplicate this sample. That's the great thing about machines, so fast. So, um, now you see I have all these samples. They're playing over each other. And you want them to cut each other off. What you do is you hit one pad, the first pad. Go to choke group, which is right here. Turn it to one. Hit that pad. Turn that choke group. Turn that to one. Hit the next one. So now, problem solved. You're cutting each other. You're cutting each other off. Um, let's take them out of choke. I'll show you a faster way. If you if you have all 16 uh, like the 16 different samples on these pads, you don't have to go by and do each one. Put them in its own choke group. You can actually press the button tab that says group. 
uncheck the one that says modules. Now, you'll see polyphony. Turn it down to one. Same as that. And if I had 16 pads, 16 samples on different pads, they would all cut each other off. And that pretty much takes care of your pad problems and most of the questions that are asked about samples on pads. Another question I get is from people who want a sample from a turntable. A lot of people ask me, can they plug a turntable into the back of the machine hardware? Of course, as we discussed already, you can't do that. So you're going to have to plug your uh, actual turntable into an audio interface. I have the TT uh, USB Newmark turntable. I actually plug the RCA jacks from the back of that into my audio interface. This particular audio interface is an M-Audio NRV10. I got it going into tracks 7 and 8. So... Whatever's coming out of the turntables, going into the mixer, my audio interface, which makes it go into my computer, and now machine will be able to find it. As we will see right here, we're going to go to the machine audio MIDI settings. And you see that the NRV10 is my particular device I'm using right now for machine. Go to routing, inputs, and you can see 7 and 8, which is where I have the turntable coming in on, on the uh, NRV10, are machine in, 4, left and right as you can see right there. So whenever I turn the machine inputs to four left and right, it'll register whatever's coming in on seven and eight on my turntable. You might have one and two, you might have your turntable plugged into uh, your audio interface. It might only have uh, two channels, left and right. You'll notice, you'll see it actually in the audio MIDI settings and it'll be easy to just tune your sample to get to where you wanna go. So I'm gonna set machine up right now to sample. And actually, I'm going to turn it till I'm at four left and right. And you know that's where the actual audio is going to be coming in. As you can see, I'm going to press put the turntable on. And as you can see, you're getting levels. So pretty much we can start sampling anytime we turn this threshold right down. I'm just going to start it sampling. Let's go. Exactly when I hit it, we have a record, a record skip. But it's old school, baby. Anyway, I got the sample that fast. And now it's inside a machine ready to do what I want with it. And that's how you get the sample into the machine from the turntable. Pretty fast, right? Now, another question I get, how to add effects quickly to whatever sample's on the pad. It's pretty simple to do that. Make sure you uh, are not in browser sampling mode. Make sure you have sounds, modules, and sampler lit. And you can see your pad, or hear your pad, actually. Now, you'll notice you have 2, 3, and 4 in the LEDs next to the sampler tab. Those are where you can put effect slots. So let's just press number 2. Boom. You want to put an effect on your sample? Shift, browse, and then just scroll through your samples. I'm going to add a reverb. And as you can see, all your settings are right there to be able to turn, you know, size, low, high. Want to add another effect? Just go over to the next tab. Three. Shift, browse. You're back in the effects again. This time I want to add a um, lo-fi. Actually, you know, let me add a, let me add something to hear better. Uh, a lot of delay. Let's load filter. Let's put a filter on it. Load. So it has two effects on it. It has a reverb and a filter. I always do that every time I hit a filter. I don't know why. Anyway, um, it's pretty it's pretty simple to get the effects on the on the sample. And if you want to actually mute the effect out for a second without taking it off of the slide, just hit shift and uh, like where the reverb light is. Boom. Now the reverb's not on. Do it for the filter also. Shift. It's, no, it's, it's still on there, but it's muted. So you want to add the filter. Hit shift. And hit it again. It's back on. Same with the reverb. Shift. Back on again. So it's pretty simple to add that. Now, if you want to do it for the whole group, let's take these. Uh, actually, you want to get the sample off. You want to take it off. Hit shift. Browse. Go up to none. Load. And you pretty much got it covered like that. Very fast. Samples are, uh, no effects on the samples now. You want to do a whole group, say you have different things, you want to just cover the whole group, just hit group. Make sure that uh, you 
you have a sound. Oh, yeah. Actually, you don't even have to have the sample select. You're going to do the whole group. So just once you hit the group button, hit shift, browse. Oh, actually, you know what we're going to do? Come out of browse mode. Once you got the group selected, you'll see one, two, three, and four. You have four slots for the group. Hit slot number one, shift, browse. Now you're back in the effects again. And I put a filter on it. So, but actually, if I had all samples, it would be on each one of these samples. And every, any adjustment I do would cover the whole uh, 16 pads of samples. So, that's pretty much how you get the effects on it pretty fast. Another question people ask me. Let's go on to the next question. Now, if you really can't get an audio interface at this time, it's definitely understandable because they do cost money. Uh, it's another workaround. People have talked about this online. I've talked about it before. It's not anything new, but I figured I'd put it in here anyway, just so everything is condensed anyway. You might as well have it in here, right? Uh, you want to sample what's on YouTube or what's playing on your computer? You don't have a loopback recording audio interface. For instance, I have the Native Instruments Audio Control 1. It doesn't have loopback. Although it's a great interface, it doesn't have loopback recording in it. And so what I'm going to do, I went to the store and say hello to my little friend. I got a quarter-inch stereo jack going out to two stereo headphone, you know, mini jacks. I think they're one-eighth inch. I don't know. Whatever. You know the headphone jack. <laughs> but anyway, like I said, the stereo, I mean, quarter-inch stereo going to two of these. These are both stereo. So I can actually plug two headphone sets in here and these mini ones, and they'll both be stereo. You want to plug that into the headphone jack of your audio interface. So now you can plug your, if you use headphones, for instance, you can plug your headphone set in here and still have another option for something coming out of here. So what I do is also I have a little mini headphone jack adapter going out to two RCA plugs. This is stereo. Make sure it's stereo. Usually you can tell by the two little lines there. Stereo. So this is going to send left and right. Plug that into this other one right here my headphones could be coming out of here so I can still hear what's playing but also the same thing will be going out of this going into these stereo RCA's left and right and you plug them into your audio interface now I don't have well actually I do depending on if your audio interface has RCA jacks or quarter inch you might have to get one of these get two of them actually and you plug it into the output of your audio interface. I'm sorry. You plug it into the input of your audio interface. I almost destroyed your ears, right? So my inputs are actually on the front. Boom. Plug them in. Left and right. So now whatever's playing out here is going back into the audio interface. And you'll be able to pick it up. Machine will recognize it. Now, I don't have machine hooked up to this audio interface, so you're not going to see it. But one thing you want to do is when you're in sampling mode, and you'll see the readings. Make sure that this monitor is off. Make sure that it's off so you can't hear what's coming through, all right? Because it'll cause feedback. Because then it'll loop back and come out of the headphone jack again. And go in, you know, you don't want that. So having this off, you'll be able to sample. You'll see the readings, and you'll be able to sample it. And then boom. You'll be able to get whatever's playing on your computer, whether it's a YouTube, an MP3, Wave, whatever. Whatever's playing is going to be sampled. Simple as that. Hey, what's up? This last segment, we just want to talk about some uh, little improvements in the uh, sequencing, or I should say the erasing of notes or, you know, just pretty much making it easier to take things out that you don't want. Uh, let's go ahead and program something real quick. Got that down. Now you see, I messed the hi hats up. I did that on purpose. I'm not that whack. Now, I don't want those hi hats. Simply hit erase, select, and I hide a pad. It's gone. Very fast. Where before, you still have the option to hold erase down and hold the notes. But I like the erase, select, boom, it's all gone. Let's go ahead and reprogram. I don't even like the feel either of that. So, erase, select, go on. More laid back. It's 
Simple as that. We're gonna put something together real quick before we roll out of here this last segment. That same record I've been messing with this whole video. Now you see that playhead? Y'all like that, right? We got it in here, 1.8. Hey, let's do. Come on, come on. I like that. That's how we gonna roll out with it. Put a little filter on it. I always end my videos with a filter. As we learned earlier, go to group, shift, and browse, and grab whatever effect you want to put on the whole group. All right. Let's see that early note. Holding all the right now. You really don't have to hold it down anymore. Shift, all the right, boom, and it's on. It stays on. I like that. Anyway, let's go ahead. Wait a minute. I hear something in my head. Hold on. Uh oh. I feel like singing, right? Uh. Once again, I got it routed to where I could just sample the mic now. Mm-hmm. Oh, y'all ain't know I can sing, right? We're gonna bring that back. Edit. What'd you say, nah? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Teddy B! Mm-hmm. Now, before I go, I just like to say, mm-hmm. Sounds so good, don't you agree? Nah, I'm just bugging y'all. Look, I thank y'all for watching this video. I'm going to have more videos coming back. I'm going to get the new controller and, you know, getting back to these beat making videos on YouTube. Also, shout out to once again to my MachineTutorials.com family, St. Joe and the whole crew. And I hope this video helped everybody who needed it on the basics, all right? I'll check y'all out. Knock out.